Hey, how you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with Crank.com. And tonight I'm having a chat to the two guys from Bedtime Magic, Morgan and Nicholas. Cheers, guys, for making some time with me all the way over in Australia and you guys over in Boston. Cheers, guys. Thanks, cheers. Thank Thanks for having us. Uh, cheers, man. First off, dude, um, who wants to grab this one? Just a quick rundown of who you boys are. Uh, hey Morgan, you can do that. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm Morgan. Uh, I play drums uh, and I play an organ with my foot, uh, and I do the smaller part of the singing. Yeah, that's cool, man. How's that work with the the organ and the foot, man? Because I was wondering, I was looking at your instruments, dude. It's like um, you vocals, drum, percussion, organ. It, it's it's a really cool sound, man. How's that all work? Is that a pretty flat out? uh yeah so it's like uh it, it's an organ like uh it, it's made to be played with your foot like like okay. they use with like uh church organs or whatever um i had found like this uh old like italian um pedal organ thing that i got for real cheap uh and it it, it shakes your balls <laughs> Uh, cool. Hey, Nicholas, and did you want to uh, just introduce yourself as well for the, the audio as well? Sure. Yeah, my name is Nicholas Pantabona. Uh, I am the carrots, the Morgan's peas, or the butter to his bread. And I do the majority of the singing, and I also play bass. So I feel like he kind of does the lion's share of the work, and then I just run around with the bass and yell things. Yeah, no, I'm sure that's not this case, but it's a really <laughs> cool sound, man. It looks really... Really cool. I love the sound. I love that trashy, grungy, as you describe it, two dog trash rock, man. It's cool. Um, I've, I've got, I know a band over in Australia called Rawest Tongue. They kind of got the same style, and I, 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 I fucking love that sound, man. The, the, the rock sound, the grimy sound of it, dude. Can you tell us a little bit about how you guys first met and formed this band? Well, it's actually a funny story. I had met Morgan a couple years prior to when uh, he and I had met as musicians, I used to work at a coffee shop uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And he would come in all the time and he would literally high five the entire staff. Like people would come up from down in the office, people would come out of the kitchen and he'd high five and high five. And so we call him the high five guy. And then a few years later I put out this ad and I was like, yeah, I'm trying to form a band that's kind of like a mix of like, slint and man is the bastard and dead guy and just like just kind of fucked up stuff and uh he responded and when i met him in person i was like you're the high five guy and he's like yeah and i was like oh this is gonna work out great that, that's pretty cool man and working in i worked in hospitality for a number of years it would have been something that really stuck out in your head someone that comes in with that cool attitude and hey man how you yeah. going yeah, yeah, and he always got the same drink. It's a Thai iced tea, which I, I remember to this day. I mean, this has got to be like 10, 11 years ago. Yeah. And, and so, Morgan, when you were like uh, approached for this, man, how, how, how were you like, yeah, man, this is cool. This is something I want to get apart. What was your first thoughts on it all? Uh, well, I've been playing, I guess, I, I've been, I, both Nicholas and I have been playing music since we were like little, little guys. You know, I've been in, in a band, I think pretty much all the time since I was like 13. Oh, wow. um, and I had, I had like quit playing with the last band I was with. Um, and I hadn't played in like a, a couple months and it was, it was driving me like a little crazy. Um, you know, like I play the drums. I have like, I have calluses on my hands that I've had on my hands since I was, since I was a little, a little guy. Um, and like the calluses started to like wear off of my hands, you know, like my hands were soft again. I was like this, like, you know, it just didn't feel right. So I was, I was looking around, you know, I like called a couple people to see what they were wanting, wanted to do. And like, you know, I, I, I was looking on the computer and I saw Nicholas put an ad with just like a bunch of bands that I liked. I was like, all right, well, let's see. And he, you know, in his ad, he said he really wanted to be just like just two people. Yeah. Um, and I've been, I, I had played in the band like in the '90s that it was just me and a guitarist and a singer. Uh, and Nicholas did like a similar sort of setup. So right. Yeah. Like, um, I was like, this sounds cool. So I sent him a message, just like, yeah, let's try it. Let's see. You know, like, 
let's see if we if it if it sounds good or if it's fun or whatever and and it was yeah dude so you were saying you've been playing drums and you've been in bands since you're little how did you first get into playing drums man what's the story behind that um i don't know i think like you know music was like always very very important for me you know um you know uh it, you know like i wanted to i don't know yeah like yeah. I, I, I played uh I played cello in like the fourth grade uh you play orchestra cello? and stuff um <laughs> that's cool and I use this cello. Cello. yeah man gotta get some of this on maybe the next album or something <laughs> yeah oh I, I i was very very bad at it i was very bad at it uh, it's that's much right. better than i that i i picked up the drums um yeah i think since i was like since i was little like my dad played guitar um and like, I think since I was little, I just always wanted to, you know, like I love music. It's like, you know, probably the most important thing in my life, uh, you know, aside from like my wife and child. Right. But um, uh, yeah, I think I had just, I had always wanted to play music and like drums is pretty cool. I get to hit stuff with sticks, you know, like I can be real, real loud. So that's cool. I always wanted to play drums, but my mom wouldn't let me. She said it was too loud and too expensive. So I had to pick something that was more demure <laughs> that would fit into the palm of my hand. And I didn't even like rock music when I was a kid. In fifth grade, me and this other kid made a pact to never get into rock music. I only listen to hip hop. And then when I was in seventh grade, somebody gave me a copy of, I think it was like Guitar Player Magazine or something. And there was a picture of a guy smashing a guitar. And I was like, oh, well, I like smashing things. This has got to be what I do. I, I don't know. I made the transition at that point. And it's a weird transition because I still like hip hop, but like, it just made more sense to me to break things and make very loud noises. Yeah, so that's how you kind of like said, this is it, I want to get into guitar. Or what was that point, dude? Oh, oh yeah, I, I spent rock a lot of years in denial of that like i was like i gotta write melodies i gotta write hooks and, and, and i think i was really confused about myself and then when i met morgan we have a lot in common like we both have the gazed ears and you know we both have like hand tattoos which you know is like an extreme for for what you're gonna do with your body and i think when i first knew that morgan and i were like kindred spirits was he took off his shoes because he takes off his shoes when he's playing the organ and he had two different socks on and I was like, what's the deal with the socks? And he was like, what does it matter? It's your socks. You put your socks on, you just do your thing. And I was like, this dude gets it, man. Like, fuck, you know, having to have the, you know, the common way of doing things and fuck having to match your socks and just, just do your shit. Yeah, and that's the beauty of being able to sit where you guys are on the underground scene. You got that freedom just to fucking create you know that that sound that you're going for dude you don't have anyone sitting over the top of you i, I dare say he's uh independent i use as well oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah and, cool and, and morgan always you know points out the fact that like uh what is it you say morgan that we weeded out all the assholes and that's why it's just the two of us yeah or, 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 or maybe or maybe we're the assholes and oh yeah <laughs> we're the we're the assholes that got weeded out <laughs> No, it'd be a definitely a lot of fun having that to total freedom to create, man, and that 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 just that sound, dude. So, you know, what's kind of what's going on with you guys at the moment with the live scene? I know not fuck all at the moment, dude. But w what's your plans for that at the moment? <laughs> he he bought an electronic drum kit, but it just didn't feel the same. It was like having sex with three condoms done. So he kind of gave up on that. But uh, they're starting to break down, like, the restrictions. You know, our practice space said as long as you're wearing a mask when you're in common areas, as long as you got, like, sanitation. So we've been practicing again, and we're writing for a full length. And we have a split that's coming out with the local band that's um, super dirty called Greylock. Like, yep. really fucking they, – they got to – it's, like, almost painful, like, how intense they are live yeah man tell us a little bit about them guys like how, how did this all happen because you've done a few splits man i'm look you've done the fuck em all split you've done the split um turn the bass down you fucks i love the names man <laughs> i just i love the style man that was one of the things that was like for me I, as uh, what i do as a kind of you know a, a reviewer interviewer slash everything else i got going on with crank when you get i've got so many 
promo emails coming in. When I get one like I got from you, Nicholas, was like, yeah, man, that's really cool. And I, 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 in general, I always gravitate more towards the ones when I get directly from the band. Right, yeah. But when he, I got your email... You noticed that I was emotionally troubled. You wondered what it's like for a person like Morgan who didn't seem as emotionally troubled as <laughs> you that person. Yeah, I was like, oh, I wonder uh, how Morgan deals with this. No, man, it was <laughs> immediately, I was like, these guys are cool guys. I've got to get them on. I've got to have a chat, dude. Yeah. Sort it out. Mor Morgan, maybe you can attest to that. How, how do you, so we do a lot of splits. We've done a bunch of records. I don't know. What's your take on the whole thing? Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know. That those guys are our pals. Yeah. Um, we played a couple of shows with them, the, the, the Greylock guys. They're, they're just, uh, we're, we're, we're just bass and drums. And they're uh, gu just guitar and drums, um, and we we have way too much equipment. Um, like we we bring a lot a lot of amps with us. Uh, they also bring way too much equipment. So like, uh, you know, like we played a show with them, and it was like, wait, those guys have more speaker cabinets than we do. Like, we gotta we got we gotta step up our game. Like, <laughs> we, we gotta bring it. And so. Um, yeah, they're just, they're real nice guys. I think all the splits that we've done, it's just been like folks we're friends with that we played shows with um, that like interested in doing the same sort of thing. Um, yes, yeah. it's a heck of a lot of fun, man. Like I know in the underground scene, I, I deal a lot with the underground scene. Splits are so cool, man. It's, it's a good way for bands to kind of get, their name out there with another band as well just to kind of Definitely. give you a little bit of a, a of what they got going on so you can listen to these two great bands you go oh fuck i've got to get this i've got to check out bedtime magic or you know whoever you're doing the split with and it's a good way for you know as you said your friends to come along and do something together man they're really cool i'm, I'm loving these splits dude awesome do, do you yeah, remember yeah. uh oh you go morgan no, no, I got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I don't, I don't know if it made its way uh, across the seas, but there was these two bands from uh, Kansas City, uh, well, from Lawrence, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri, uh, the Get Up Kids and Coalesce, and I remember they did a split, and one of the bands, Get Up Kids, covered a Coalesce song in their style, and then Coalesce covered a Get Up Kids song in their style, and it was just crazy because the songs are so different. But there's the same lyrics, the same basic ideas. And we said, well, shit, we should do that with Greylock. So with the split that's coming out, we covered one of their songs in our style, which, you know, is we got, we got like uh, polyrhythmic with it. And, you know, we changed around the way that it goes. We changed the, the structure for the lyrics. And they did the same thing with ours. So our song King Size, which is normally like 45 seconds, they did it in like three minutes and 45 seconds. And it's just like layers of screaming. Like just, ah. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm looking forward to checking this out. So when he's got that coming out at all, are you able to say? It's finished being recorded. It yep. needs to be mastered. And then we need to have someone give us cash to put it out. We don't have cash, but we want that. We don't even want the cash. We just want the record, but they need to give us the cash to do the record. That, that's it. I've had this conversation with a lot of um, artists as well, and I, I always bring this up, and I'm glad it's been brought up. If you like a band, support them, because they, they're barely making petrol money when they go to these shows, and especially guys like yourself in the underground scene. You know, you're a chef, you know, you're working. Aren't you a chef? I think you're a chef. Something like that, you know, you're working. Yeah, yeah. You did do your research. <laughs> yeah, man. And you, you, you work, you, like most people in the music industry, unless you're in that top, like, 10%, you're working nine to five jobs, dude. And the money you're making at work half yeah. the time, that's putting back into your album. So, you know, if the the good thing, people really need to get along and support, not just stream it. So where's the best place people can get along and support Bedtime Magic, dude? So to help you guys with the next album. Definitely Bandcamp, right? Yeah, Bandcamp, man. Bandcamp, most of our yeah, sales. Right, you can buy all the stuff through the band, through the Bandcamp thing, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah man. And this website, man. I, I mean, it's just amazing. And then I think uh, this weekend they're they're donating their share, like their amount that they would normally take to the NAACP, which uh, in the United States that's the uh, National uh, 
they changed what it means. It used to be the National African American College Program, but they changed it. I think it's community program now. Yep. No, no, National Association for the Advancement of Colored Colored, People. Yeah. yeah, but didn't it used to be for uh, the college program? No, I guess it's for the advancement of colored people. But yeah, they're donating all the money to that, which is pretty great. Yeah, I like what Bandcamp do. I try and get over there and get my music through there and whatever else and constantly bring that up. And they've done some really cool things over the last few months with artists struggling with the COVID-19. Because honestly, man, I don't know what's like in the US, but over here in Australia, the art sector has just totally forgot forgotten about. You know, if we were like the oil companies or something, I'm sure they'd prop us up, but <laughs> or something like really? that. But yeah, I know. Um, Bandcamp has been pretty good. Where they've uh, a few weekends they've donated, not uh, cut, not taken any money at all, isn't it? I think that's right. Something like that for the yeah, artists. What, what kind of programs do they donate down there? Are there are there things like that, like the the national. Uh association for the advancement of colored people or are they things yeah, like yeah we talked about people? this with i talked about this with jeremy the other day man um with four because everything was kind of cracking off it, it's easy for i've got to get philosophical philosophical here man but it's easy for the rest of the world to sit here and you know judge what's going on in america and not look at the positive sides of it and it's on both sides the media kind of you know, it's just, it's just as bad here in Australia. It's easy for us in Australia to go, whoa, America and, you know, everything. It's the same here in Australia. We need to really do more for the Indigenous culture here in Australia and definitely the, the people we have here in Australia. The deaths in custody, we've had like 436 deaths in custody here, man. Like, Ooh, yeah. yeah, dude, after over so many years, I think since 2011, and that's Aboriginal deaths in custody, man. So it's, it's not yeah. just America where this is happening. It's all over the world, man. Yeah. Yeah, New Zealand's really fucked everybody there. Like, I was reading about that the other day, and it's just like, I, I forget, was it the Dutch? or it, it, I can't remember, but they went to New Zealand, and they just, like, pushed out all the, you know, they made them sign treaties and stuff that they didn't want to sign. And so there's a lot of taking indigenous cultures and just ripping them out to make place for the for white people. Yeah, I'm hoping things start really, really change and things like this. It's good to hear, see people having a voice, you know, and at the end of the day, yeah, was, you know, was it um, Martin Luther King said, writing is the, um, the voice of the voiceless, you know, the unheard, the voice of the unheard. So yeah, yeah. you get what you get, man. So what's next for Bedtime Magic, man? The, oh, actually, I want to talk about your album, Pillow Talk. That came out November last year. That was like your full length album, dude. What was it like getting that one out? <laughs> Hey, Morgan, you want to feel this one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You hate the record? Uh, so, uh, yeah, that, uh, we recorded it with this guy, Andrew Schneider, who, like, uh, I've known for a long time. I used to, an old band of mine shared a practice space with him years ago. And he was in this band, uh, Slug Hog, which was, like, a band from Boston that both Nicholas and I were big fans of. Um, He's recorded a bunch of bands that we like, like, um, so uh, we we re ended, we recorded with him. Like, uh, I sort of had to talk Nicholas into into doing it, um, uh, but it was it was a really it was a good time. Uh, like, he's very very talented guy, very very easy to work with. Um, so we do, we went down to New York for a weekend to record. Um, yeah. Fun fun process yeah 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 uh he was uh yeah he's very very good at his job he works very quickly um and a lot of times like i don't know if you if you're a musician yourself or like a lot of times when recording the the folks that like the engineers or the producers tend to be like sort of hands off like uh that was fine if you're if you're into it like that's that'll be good enough you know but he he you know we we sort of asked them up front. We were like, listen, like we want to make the best record. So like you tell us like what's, what's going to happen, you know, like you tell us if, if things are good enough and, and like, you know, like obviously we got everything like perfect the first try on all the songs. So uh, I'm being facetious, but he was, yeah. he was, he was like very good about being like, no, you guys like didn't hit that part. Right. Or, you know, like, like, yeah, it was good. It was good. I don't know. 
Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get you because I've talked to a, a. I'm not a musician. I'm just a lover of music, man. And I have been for so many years, dude. It's you know I'm 40, dude, and it's the one thing that's got me through so many times. I was thinking about that before this interview, dude. As someone with, you know, anxiety and the other conditions I've dealt with all my life, the one constant has been music and musicians and what they've done for me in my life has been. It's got me to where I am. Ultimately, you go a day without music or art or anything, dude. It's your life is so bland and boring. It's insane. But coming back to your point about producers, the people that I have talked to and the producers that I know have always been really good at putting their points in, you know, and not doing it in a bad way. Like you're saying, you said, no, no, this is change that a little and do this. And, you know, it seems like that's the trait of the really good producer to come in and go, hey, I'm the music smarts on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was yeah, it was yeah. a lot of fun, and we had had like, like with the the split with uh, Greylock, we had had some folks who were like interested in in putting it out, and then money is is what it is, and so like that like we ended up not going with the first people who wanted to do it, and we we sort of sent it around to a bunch of places, and we talked with this guy Greg. Uh, who does nefarious industries and they put out like a bunch of really cool stuff like very a lot of very different things yep. um, like they're always doing something like it's always interesting like the people that they're working with it's like they're they're, they're not putting out the same record twice you know um, and they were he was Greg was super excited to do it um, and so yeah so he he threw some money at it and we we got it pressed and 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 now we'll never recoup any money on it ever again. <laughs> no, no, I love that. By the way, this picture of the dog, which I think looks like Morgan's face on my body. <laughs> like it's like a merger of the two of us. Yeah, man, I'm a dog lover, dude. I love the whole concept with the dogs on the albums and everything as well. How did that all start, man? <laughs> that well, was Morgan's idea. He, yeah? he tends to have a lot of these these wild ideas where I will. It's funny because I'm very eccentric and he seems more reserved and calculated. But then when it comes down to the ideas that we put in the practice phase, he ends up being just completely fucking psychotic. And then I end up being the one that's like, you know, well, I don't know. So he, he, he was like, look, we need it. Well, I said we need a theme for the band. And he's like, what are the things that we like? And I'm like, I don't know. I like sex, but that's been overdone. We like food. <laughs> And he's like, we both like dogs. <laughs> like, all right. Yeah. Uh, is that what you want? You want to do dog? Like bedtime magic for the band name. That was his idea. That's a, a radio program up here where they play like cool jazz and soothing music to get you to bed. And they talk like this. Well, they, it's not that. Can you do David Alan Boucher's voice? Because I can't do it very well. Well, he's got a very, very deep and very smooth voice. Bedtime. It's very relaxing. Um, yeah. So he suggested that, and I was like, that's a fucking lame idea. And then the, the more I thought about it, the more it grew on me. I'm like, it's kind of like a triple entendre. Like, it's like not just a double entendre. There's a lot of depth to this name. So we went with that, and then the dogs was his thing. And then he wanted us to start wearing spandex on stage because I told him I, I like to wear shorts. And he's like, shorts? You could get so much more motion with a wrestling outfit. And I was like, that's a terrible idea. We should not do this idea. And now we wear a wrestling thing that's on stage. Yeah. I reckon that's awesome, dude. That's so cool. And that's what the, the, the joy and the freedom of the underground scenes like. I don't know what it's like over there in the US, but I'm sure it's pretty similar to here in Australia. Like uh, a guy, Shay Fox, he's actually in just about to release an underground documentary about the punk scene over here in Australia called Unearthing the Earth. I want to see that. Is he, yeah. he going to put it on YouTube or Vimeo? Oh, or I'll, share, I'll share it to you, dude, when it comes out. I've had a little look at the Please first. I've watched as many of the albums. Oh, you'd love it, dude. It's really cool, man. It covers a lot of the, the punk scene and it'll probably bring up a lot of the same points that you have over in problems and the, you know, the positives and the negatives of the underground scene over there in the US yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. So is the underground scene fairly strong over there in Boston? Yeah, I, it comes in waves. Boston's yeah. like a very, uh, there's a lot of colleges here. Yeah. So yeah. It seems like um, like Nicholas and I are both older. We've been around for a long time. We've done a lot of different bands and stuff. It seems like a lot of times in Boston, 
I'd say like every five years or so, it seems like uh, there's a whole new group of people doing stuff, which can be good and can be bad. Um, yeah. But it, you know, it, like it keeps it uh, keeps it fresh. Like there's lots of new ideas running through. Um, you know, it can get a little clicky, but like uh, there's some a lot of really good bands doing doing good stuff. Unfortunately, like you were saying with COVID stuff, um, I think a lot of the a lot of the bars and a lot of the places that like have music, um, you know, like the oh, really? gentrification, like the you know the the rents are going up, lots of luxury apartments and that kind of thing, and and so a lot of the bars are like, you know, are closing down or closing not- up. Because the bars yeah. that have been there for 20, 30 years or something playing music and there's someone who buys a place next door and then complains that they're playing music. That's exactly what happened right. with Pete Scott, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's the same here in Australia, dude. It's, um, a, a, and the same with the underground scene. It, it, you guys would be reeling just like every other musician all over the world in the underground scene because the live music keeps you guys going. Like, like as I was saying, probably plays your petrol and maybe a couple of beers afterwards. But Yeah, we had uh, <laughs> and we don't drink, so <laughs> no, nah, neither do I, dude. Not anymore, man. I'm right. just I'm just a smoker these days. I can't keep up drinking, yeah. man. Just <laughs> just just keep them on what, grand. What's the one thing? Because I know that drinking is a big is a big part of Australia. Like I, I, you know, my only familiarity is with through the music and through movies and whatnot. So I could it could be a total stereotype, but just cosmic psychos they make it seem like <laughs> Australia is a drinking center. Is that true or? Uh, there's a lot of drinking. Um, it's just, I don't know. As society, um, it's come around. Like I, I go to these shows. I, I work in the industry a lot. So I don't drink, man, as well. But plus, I'm at the age I just couldn't be fuck drinking anymore. So, yeah, there are a lot of pissed up yobbos. But it's the way it is everywhere, I suppose. I think the, the culture for a number of years, it's been socially okay to get blind, rotten, drunk and make a fool out of yourself. But things are starting to change, dude. So... Yeah, it yeah. it can be like that at times, but there's a lot of great people in the scene. And no, nah, it's not, I don't know, it's like everything in life. It's probably the same over there. You have a lot of people who like to drink and a lot of people who like to do their own thing. So yeah, yeah, can, yeah, yeah. at times, man, it's footy mad country. It's, you know, the drinking culture, but you know, that can change. Yeah. What what part of the country are you in? I press what part of Australia? Still there? Yeah, I'm can still- you hear us okay? Wait, let me pause. Tree, right? It's huge. Yeah, man. It's it's a massive country, dude. I'm down in South Australia, so I live on the Murray River. Uh, it's the largest river system in Australia, so I'm in Pringa. It's like a small country town, dude. I'm about three and a half hours from Adelaide, which is the capital city of South Australia. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. There's penguins there. There's penguins in South Australia, right? Yeah, yeah, down at Kangaroo Island. Um, I don't go too Kangaroo far. Island. Yeah, yeah, Kangaroo Island. It's a little island down the, the yeah. bottom there. I think we've got penguins over in Tassie and a few different places like that, man. It's, you know, it's a great country, dude. You should probably fucking love it over here for a holiday, eh? I, I used to be a nanny, and they had a kid come up from, um, I think it was Bermuda. And he saw a squirrel for the first time, and he lost his fucking mind. He was like, "What is this thing?" <laughs> yeah, man. We so, do- you go, Morgan. All right. So, how, how much do you know about koalas? Can I ask you koala questions? Uh, you can ask me a koala question. I'll try, dude. <laughs> all right. All right. So, uh, my buddy Nate and and and, and Chris, they play. Um. They play in this band, Doom Riders, and they had they had toured in Australia, and they they said they they like stopped someplace on the road. There was all these koalas. And they said the koalas eat like menthol leaves or or eucalyptus eucalyptus leaves. leaves yes. Yeah, and he said like that that they're basically the co- the koalas are high like all the time. Like the they eat eucalyptus and it, it like it's like they're getting stoned. Yeah, is that true? Yeah, that is true, dude. Yeah, man. Uh, no. No shit, You're dude. No, You're no, dude. no, no shit, dude. That's why they're all like so chill, sitting in their tree, just fucking doing their thing, man. Yeah. What is a spirit I, animal. I, I don't know if you've noticed this. I could be naive about things. You, Morgan's usually the voice of reason, so if this isn't true, I'm gonna believe it. 
Yeah, well, it's out there in the ether now. And everyone will be able to pick me up on it. They'll go, fucking John, that Aussie oh, metal oh. guy, you're full of shit. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking like Aussie, so, man. He's screwing with you. This is, the, this is the other thing I, I, learned, I, I learned about koalas. And, and like, you can confirm or deny this. So I used to work at a, at a bar. Um, and on, like, Friday nights, we would have, they would have comedy, like an open mic thing and, and so this comedian would come in this lady um and she did this bit all the time about that she you know she worked she was a librarian like a kid's librarian and so she was helping this kid learn about koalas and she found out that um i think it's like 65 percent or 70 percent of all koalas have uh it's either gonorrhea or chlamydia yeah, I don't know, man. Do I don't know that. that? <laughs> I don't know that, but I, I don't know, man. That sounds like um, I don't know if that. How would you actually find about squirrels having chlamydia? Like I don't know. Yeah, I but, don't but know. so here's the, here's the thing, though. So if like seventy percent of koalas like have have chlamydia or, or gonorrhea, so they have an like seventy percent have an STD. Like one, don't it tells you like. But well, let me on. talk, man. Hold on, hold on. So, like, that means like the koalas are getting freaky. So they're like they're they're doing it with with everybody. But it also means like thirty percent of koalas are fucking losers. Yeah, they're too stoned on the eucalyptus to do anything, dude. <laughs> yeah, the koala fucking jerk their jangles, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that's an interesting one. I'll have to actually check that one out, dude. I've never heard of that one, eh? Do they lay eggs? They don't lay eggs. No, right? no, 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 no. They're mammal or a marsupial, right? Yeah, like, yeah, a marsupial. So they have a pouch. Yeah, yeah, same as like the platypus and the kangaroo yeah. as well. Sorry, thanks for answering these questions, man. Because we we we've been wondering, and it's it's such a long trip. I can't just fucking get on a plane and go to Australia. Ah, uh, dude, there's a track, man. Um, hidden intent. They're a, a thrash band out of Adelaide, South Australia. They do one called Drop Bears Are Real. Which is really cool. No, yeah, people fucked with me about the drop bears thing, <laughs> and I believed it for the day. <laughs> yeah, dude, that you come over here, and it's usually you got some smart ass Aussie like myself going, fucking watch out for the drop bears, dude. Yeah, the, fucking, the drop bears are gonna get you, man. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, man, they actually done the track with an American as well. I can't even remember his name or the band, but it was pretty cool, man. I'll have to send it through to you after, Nick. You'll like, get a laugh out of it, dude. Yeah. Uh, killer bedtime magic, man. Before we sign out there, guys, after our killer chat about koalas and everything else, did you uh, last words, shout outs, thank yous from you two? Uh, thank you for having us. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, been fun, it's been bro. Great, man. You know, a lot of interesting stuff from your end. I always like the interviews where I get something out of it, too, like where I learn something or I experience somebody else's culture, way of life, or thoughts on music. So I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I love it, dude. It's all about conversations and connections, man. That's what it is for me. Yeah, so figure out about the, the check out the, the make you know see see if it, see if it's real with the koalas. Oh, I will, dude. <laughs> Fixated on this, he's not going to leave it alone. <laughs> no, no, I, I will, and I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll, I'll tell Nick afterwards after I check it all out. Cheers, boys. <laughs> Thank you very much. Everyone, check out Bedtime Magic. Get on Bandcamp. Show these boys some support. Hey, eh? let's get this next album out. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks. much.